Hi everyone, it's Ashley Gronwald with Hunter Row Real Estate and I am here with Amy Joyner and she is the owner of the British Swim School and we have been working with her for a while now. She's seen two of our three kids and swim lessons and it's been such a joy and just a journey of just lots of really great things. Everything from you know us feeling safer with our kids near water and also building confidence in our kids and then just the fun relationship that we've had as we've watched my little ones grow up. So I wanted to just invite you, Amy, to share with us just about the value of swimming. I think I recall you telling me that you have um, some swimming um, in your maybe collegiate years that you can share about and what got you involved and, in, you know, having the swim school and then everybody's famous question of what's the British swim school? Like what part of <laughs> exactly. what makes it British? So I want to get yeah. into all of those with you, but before we do, just introduce yourself if you wouldn't mind. Tell us who you are, a little bit about your family, and then we'll jump in. Thanks for having me, Ashley. I really appreciate it. This is going to be so much fun. Um, I'm Amy with British Swim School. My husband and I um, purchased British Swim School about four, maybe five years ago now, so we're coming up on four years actually being open. I've got three boys. Uh, they're all older. I've got one that just graduated from college, one that just got out of high school, and one that's already working and is off on his own, doing his own thing. It's great. <laughs> yeah. And um, we decided to open up British Swim School a while back because we were looking to own our own business. And so Stan spent the majority of his career doing medical supply sales. I stayed at home with the boys, which was the best, hardest job ever. Mm -hmm. No regrets. But um, so as the kids got older, we decided it was time for us to start looking at do, uh, owning a business. And we wanted to do a franchise. And so we actually got a franchise broker, which is much like a real estate agent, except they are looking for, instead of finding you a house, they're finding you a franchise. So we did a personality profile and they brought to us a couple of different options and they said we really want you to look at British Swim School we think that's a great match for your for your personalities so we looked at it actually that night I kind of went online and started looking at it and the next morning I told Stan I said well I have decided what I'm going to do <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want to do and so we started reaching out to talk to other franchise owners we're all across the United States we're even in Canada now and it is like a big huge family and um, so we were pretty much it was a quick decision we were both swimmers growing up you mentioned the swimming so all the way through I mean I did lifeguarding I did swim team Stan did the same he worked at the YMCA he actually taught some lessons so all of our, all the way through high school was all about swimming everywhere and on swim teams. So it was just kind of a full circle type thing for us to end up at British Swim School and having this awesome business where we meet great families like yours. Mm -hmm. um, it's just fun. And so when we went, when we looked at franchises, one of the things that I said was, I want to have fun, <laughs> number one, and I want to do something where we're helping our community. And so we were just trying to find a way to mesh all of that together and then we never really had envisioned having a swimming franchise, but but it all this is how it all worked out. That's so here awesome. we are. I love that. I think it's so cool. And one thing I would share just for people listening is, you know, I know you have instructors in the pool with the kids, but you and your husband have both taught my kids in a pinch. <laughs> and it's like that just shows the like the familyness of the ownership. It's not um, that you guys are so far removed that you don't know your people and their family. I mean, I feel like um, you watched Ellie as she grew up and just felt so connected to you and that. And, and I think that's really important when you're teaching them a life skill like swimming. And so I feel like we've just felt really connected to you and the school. And so the, I think that's what's unique. Um, we've done lots of different swim things for our kids. And that's one thing that I would say I've always come back to is just feeling like we, you guys know our names and you care about our family versus just another kid in the pool, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Thank you so much. That that's the goal. That's the yeah. goal. And, and I actually love being in the water. It's, it's fun to be in the water and mm -hmm. that's where everything happens as far as, Oh, well last week they wouldn't do this, but this week they're doing that. So we're making some progress. Mm -hmm. So behind the scenes, even if we're not in teaching the kids um, behind the scenes, we're always touching base with our instructors on where are they? How are they progressing? Mm -hmm. What's going on with this student or that? 
but I do love teaching. It's super fun. So it's something that I plan to do on a regular basis. Um, as long as we have the franchises to always be in the water and be in touch. And I go to the aquatics conferences as well. So I get in the water and do the training to make sure that because, you know, we're tra- we're training everyone else. Mm-hmm. So if I don't if I don't know the program really well, then I feel like we're kind of missing uh, a step in sure. training our instructors. So it's really important for me to stay really close to that. We actually had somebody in from headquarters two weeks ago, and then we have somebody else coming in from headquarters in a couple of weeks. So it's really nice to have the added extra training help. And then for mm-hmm. me to be a piece of that and for Sam to be a piece of that too. For is sure. really nice and type it trickles down. Absolutely. Well, I know when we started researching schools for swimming for Ellie, we came across the British Swim School and we thought, why British? Like, is there a different <laughs> philosophy? And I remember asking you and you shared, but share for everyone who's listening, what is the British Swim School and why is it named that? So, so funny that you bring that question up because this year is the 40th anniversary for British Swim School. So British Swim School was founded 40 years ago um, by Rita Goldberg. She's still involved in the franchise, but she started in Manchester, England, in the basement of her home in Manchester, England, because she also was a swimmer growing up. And she started teaching some lessons there. And then she moved to Florida, but she kept that location open and running. She moved to Florida and she opened up a little swim school in Florida because she said there's water everywhere in Florida. We need to have a swim school here. And um, when she did, people really loved her philosophy. She was one of the first ones 40 years ago to realize that floating is the foundation and that we should learn how to float first. And so her swim program was built on floating first and learning how to roll over to float, the survival part first. And so people loved her program. They loved her approach. It's fun. It's gentle. And so they wanted to take it to other parts of the United States. So honestly, she had never considered being a franchise. She had never Mm -hmm. thought that she would franchise out her program, but they did. And so it went to Maryland and went to Chicago and we were the first ones to buy in North Carolina, but that's why it's British Swim School. That's awesome. So what makes it different? Cause I mean, like I said, I've done a few different philosophies or schools, you know, there's so many different options for parents. What would you say makes your model different that parents should know about? So the one thing that sold us on on this franchise in particular is that it is survival first. So we are a survival-based swim school. We have a fun and gentle approach to learning how to survive first. So if your child is at the barbecue, at the swimming pool, and they're fully clothed, and they're not planning on getting in, but there's a, this actually happened. A dog was running around on the deck at this at, next to the pool and pushed this child in fully clothed. Do they know how to survive? Do they know how to roll over and float? Because that is your survival. Floating is the only place in the water where you can breathe and call for help and, and get back to the side safely. So everything that we do and every skill builds on the next, but the first thing is floating. So that's our foundation. That's what we believe in. And if you think about progressively learning how to swim, you can't really do backstroke until you have a really strong, confident back float. Mm-hmm. So Every single skill that we teach builds on the next. So if our kids go backwards a little bit, which will happen, it's frustrating to see, but it will go happen. Then we have to go backwards with our program and grab that skill from three, you know, levels back and reteach that skill to make sure they have it and then build again on that skill. So we're going to learn how to roll over float first, which Ellie can do. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to start to, learn how to do our backstroke. And then we're going to learn how to do our freestyle. So a lot of times parents will call and they say, well, my child loves to swim under the water. And that's mm-hmm. great. Like, I'm so glad that they can submerge and go under the water. But but our concern is when your child comes up out of the water, are they able to roll over and float? Or are they converting to um, a doggy paddle type, you know, movement, which will totally wear you out. Right. So we want we want our kids, if they go under the water, we want them to roll over and float first so they can breathe and it's a very hard skill to teach it's it doesn't come easy it's it's Mm -hmm. a it's it's something that's muscle memory it has to be Mm -hmm. learned it does not come naturally for children to do this right um so it takes a while to look to teach that skill but it's it's just so important when one thing that i love that you guys do is you know you the part you said survival is first but the kids don't know that they're having fun like you said the fun part of it And I think that's a really important blend because as parents, we want them to be safe, 
but then we also want them to go back to swim lessons and want to go back. Um, and so they're having fun and you guys blend that so well in that you're teaching them to save themselves if they were to fall into the water or something like that happen, but they're having a blast doing it. Um, you know, from the baby dolls that you have in the water and you're flipping them over and telling them, <laughs> you know, this is how baby can breathe, all of those little visuals that help them. And then just how you have all these different levels. So they're graduating from each level and getting a different colored swim cap. And it's so exciting for my kids when they get a new color. It's like they're really proud of their accomplishment and a visual yes. um, reminder that they're now in the next level um, with, mm -hmm. you know, kids that are progressing with them. So I think that's really fun. I guess another question I'd have is what do you see as the benefits of the model versus another? I know safety first, having a whole lot of fun. Um, what mm -hmm. else would you say is a benefit of the way the British Swim School does it? Well, everything that you just said, safety first, having fun while doing it, learning mm -hmm. your survival is the, mm -hmm. is the most um, important part for me is to make sure that if they ever do fall in, I'll give a perfect example. I was working with a student recently and, and I've been working with him for a while. And the other day we were working on um, rolling over and he was trying to jump in, roll over and float. He's done it a million times. And this last time that he did it, I got a little bit farther away from him than I normally would just to see what he would do to see if he would reach for me or if he actually would use the skill, the roll over and float. And he didn't, he panicked. And so he did not roll over to float. So I had to remind him, you've got to roll over and float, even if I'm a couple of steps away. So it is a skill that has mm -hmm. to be repeated over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the benefit of our program is that even when they do, like Ellie just moved up, mm -hmm. and, but even in that next level, we're still going to have her jump in, roll over and float because that's a right. skill they should never, we don't want them to lose that skill. That's their right. survival skill. Right. And so, um, it's just that's the benefit to me is for them this one student is he's not ready to move up because right. he does not have confidence we want them to have confidence when they use that mm -hmm. skill too ellie has confidence when she does her yeah. rollover or float right. and this student did not he's not ready to move up we've got to keep working on that skill over and mm -hmm. over and over again and we'll tell his parents when you guys go to the beach because they were getting ready to go to the beach before right after this lesson i said when you go to the beach you practice that skill with him. Mm -hmm. He needs to be confident. He needs to go in, roll over and float. So it's just, that's the benefit is the survival. It's awesome. That part. Speak to when you think it would be best to get kids started. Like what is the philosophy? When do you even start taking them all the way to how old your oldest participant is or how old you're willing mm -hmm. to, to teach? Um, and yeah, when, when on that spectrum is the best time to get started? So we get started at three months of age with ours, with our, with our babies. And obviously with babies, you know, we're not teaching stroke. We're obviously teaching um, how to roll over and float. So floating and floating and roll over floating. Honestly, babies, little younger babies are so easy because they will lay back on their backs. They don't, they don't have the developmentally, they don't sit up yet. They're not mm -hmm. trying to sit up and explore the world yet. Mm -hmm. So babies are, are pretty easy to, to, to teach that skill to because they developmentally aren't trying to fight that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you get a two year old in there, they know that, hey, I can go explore this and explore that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we start as young as three months and we go all the way up to, I think we've had a 76, 78 year old woman come and um, come and learn how to swim. It's never too early, it's never too late. I think everyone should have the opportunity to learn how to swim no matter what the age, you just have to kind of meet people where they are. And so we have a lot of kids that have fear. We have a lot of adults that almost drown as children and they are coming back to us after having that bad experience and they come in with a huge fear of water and we have to work through the fear. Just like with our kids, if they have fear, which kids will come up with irrational fears sure. all the time. <laughs> okay. And so we have to work with them through that fear and it's a process. It doesn't happen quickly. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not a quick fix. It's like life. You have to just keep on getting over those little humps that you come up against and then eventually you're going to get it. And then I know for Ellie and Parker, they've been in individual classes and then they've also been in where there's multiple children so mm -hmm. if a mom was coming to you saying i'm really interested but are they private or group lessons how would you answer that so we have both we have a group lesson there's four max in our group lesson um, one of the things that i love about the group lessons is that they learn from their kids and i even heard you say this one time to ellie when she was 
sitting on the side and you said, Ellie, watch from your friends. You can learn from your friends. And they do. They I, And also peer pressure and some lessons can be a really good thing. <laughs> so um, I think that one of the little girls in her class actually moved up before we thought that she would because she was determined that if Ellie was going to move up and if um, Kenley was going to move up, then she was going to move up too. So she just fought her way through that to, mm -hmm. to get to the point where she could stay with them in class because she knew that they were going to all stick together. They made friends. And so she was, you know, glad about that. But we also do semi-private and private classes too, especially with COVID. We actually had an increase in semi-privates and privates, but I really encourage people to try a little bit of both. Yeah. Sometimes we, we will take a step back and if they're in a private, then sometimes we will do a group for them, especially mm -hmm. if they're kind of stuck, if they're not progressing then we'll right. say, let's put them in a, let's put them in a group and see if that will help to push them through this, you mm -hmm. know, over this hump that they have with their not wanting to submerge or they're not wanting to float independently. So we'll put them in a group class and then it's kind of neat to see that they are like, oh, well, she's doing it and she's younger than I am. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to do it now. So, yeah, you know, it just depends on the kid. And that's the other thing. You're not putting them by age. You're putting them by mm -hmm. skill. So they can learn from each other, like you're saying, and they're not held back because they're with their age group, but not their skill level. So they can move as they progress through the skills versus their birthday, which I think is helpful. That's right. That's very, that's so right. We actually move them up. There's five goals for every level. As soon as they hit their goals and they hit them confidently and mm -hmm. can do that skill repeatedly, then we will move them up um, regardless of their age. So we have, I mean, you know, we have a little three-year-old that's a, turtle one now. And I mean, Ellie was on the same, on the same track. So, you know, they move up when they get to that skill. Right. So, and then for frequency, what, I mean, we go once a week, is that recommended? Do you recommend more frequently? And then I think probably for you, maybe the winter months, people pull out of swim lessons and they think about it again in the summer. What, what would be ideal for kids to have on a frequency basis? So once a week, I think is great, especially if they are practicing at home, because I know that a lot of times we'll say, when you guys go to the pool, practice this skill and practice that skill. And I totally recommend that. Whatever your kids are doing in swim lessons, when you guys do go to the swimming pool, I recommend that you practice whatever you're doing in swim lessons, practice that first before you let them have playtime or let them do whatever they want to do. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, once a week is, is good. If you're practicing on the side twice a week, they're going to pro progress more quickly. If they're coming twice a week, they will. Right now is our busiest time. Um, might be hard to find twice a week right now. Um, but in the fall, it's usually when people aren't thinking about it as much. So mm -hmm. it, that's a great time for, to me, we're year round. And that's a great time for kids to continue to come once or twice a week to learn all winter long what they need to know for the following summer. And then it's amazing how, how, how ready they are for summertime. That's so good. And yeah, I would just think that you're always kind of starting over a little bit on some of those skills. If, if you drop out <laughs> over the fall, winter months, you know, we're going back mm -hmm. a little bit, but I mean, they catch back up, I think, but to do it year round so that they're just honing those skills seems to be the best option if it's possible. I absolutely agree. And I, I honestly feel like, you know, if you think about our kids that are soccer players or that are ballet, you know, how long does it take for you to become a really good ballet dancer? How long does it take for you to become a really good soccer player? It takes a long time to get to that. Mm -hmm. And if people, people will never regret putting their kids in some lessons because it is a life skill. Mm -hmm. So if they will just stick with it until their kid knows all four strokes and they're full of turns and they're ready to be on a swim team, then to me, that's ideal. Right. And one thing that's unique for you <laughs> and you can speak to it is just, you're not necessarily in a one building that you have to drive 30, 45 minutes to in the triangle to get to. You're in kind of these multiple locations, but they're not even like British swim school structures. So speak mm -hmm. to that a little bit. So part of our model is to spread out in our community. And so we are in four different locations. We're in Wake Forest. We have two in North Raleigh now. I don't even know if you know about our, our newest one. Maybe you do. And yeah. then um, <laughs> and then we're in Briar Creek. So we have four locations now, and then we'll spread out even more over, over the years. But that's our part of our model is to spread out so mm -hmm. that we can, um, you know, cater to people in all these different areas. So it's a little different, but it's, it's good. Right. And so these are at, like, two of those are hotels, the Briar Creek 
And then the new North Raleigh one off Wake Forest, right? That'll be mm-hmm. at a hotel. And then health tracks. Mm-hmm. And then what's Wake Forest? And Are they- Wake Forest is a hotel too. Okay. Mm-hmm. So three hotels and one fitness center right now. So cool. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're getting the pool experience, but not necessarily one brick and mortar that you have to drive to that's too far. So you can find a right. location nearby, which is awesome. Right. And then apart from safety, I think we all know the the importance of safety for our kids. But what about developmentally? What have you seen over the past five years of owning this franchise of watching kids develop, whether it's physically, emotionally, their confidence level? What do you see as benefits from swimming apart from just safety? There's so much apart from safety developmentally. I mean, we have the social part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was talking about Ellie and her little class and how tight they've become. Mm-hmm. We have other classes that are just the same. I think they're going to stick together through the whole program, yeah. <laughs> honestly. And then, you know, confidence. We're building confidence mm-hmm. in the kids. When they get a skill, they're so excited that they got it. It's something they've been working on for so mm-hmm. long. And so we're building confidence in them. And um, it just, you know, the social part of it, the confidence part of it, mm-hmm. and the safety part of it the um, coordination part of it because right. kids at a very young age they're learning how to kick their feet and move their arms all at the same time right and co- coordinate that all together and that's kind of a big feat for for kids to right. do at a young age but it just really helps them co- you know coordination wise when they can get these skills and get it all clicking together and it will work. It doesn't maybe work, look very smooth at first when they're first trying to kick and move their arms at the same time, but they will get it with repetition. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's just an awesome thing for them to learn how to do. And it works, swimming works both sides of your body. Mm-hmm. So even if you're right-handed or if you're left-handed, it doesn't matter. You're coordinating both sides. You're moving the left as much as you are the right. It's the same. That's awesome. And then I know for you, was this the only sport you participated in? Like, was this your sport in high school and growing up? Or did you have multiple sports? I did. I did others. So I okay. did this. I did swimming, tennis, cheerleading, gymnastics, like all this, all the fun stuff. I did all of, I did all of that. You were doing it all. That's awesome. Because yeah. yeah. um, Jed, he was a swimmer, which I was talking to him yesterday yesterday about this, I was like, you know, because we're really seeing Ellie just really develop as a swimmer at a young age and loving it and doing well. And I was just thinking, like, could this be her sport? You know, because one thing my dad told me really young, he was like, you could be okay at a whole bunch of things or really good at one thing, because I was in a lot of different sports. And so it stuck with me. It's like, pick one, you know, and so I had that mind- mindset for Ellie. And she's too young to know. But, you know, I was just wondering, like, would this be her sport, potentially? I mean, we don't want to force that mm-hmm. on her but encouraging her just as she's doing well at it, you know, and watching her have fun. I mean, we have a a neighborhood um, swim team, which I was thinking, gosh, is this going to be complicated for her? Because you teach different. I mean, even from the peanut butter and jelly, you know, and then they're (laughs) teaching something different. And I was talking to one of the staff members and they're like, it'll work out. She'll figure it out. Even though there's different words or ways of teaching, we'll just keep an eye on her so she's not getting sloppy, which we don't want her Mm -hmm. to do. But I was just curious if you've had that where kids get involved in other programs simultaneously and you see that interfering or do you not see it be a big issue? I don't. Yeah, I don't see it being a big issue. And I think it's good for them to try different things. Mm -hmm. Swimming is a life skill, though. And so a lot of the other activities that kids, well, most of the other activities that kids are involved in, it's not a life skill. So of course, yeah. for me, and that's our passion, that's our business. And, and we know the drowning statistics that aren't talked about a whole lot because they're not fun statistics to, to yeah. know about, honestly. Right. But um, I don't think people will ever regret doing some lessons for their kids because yeah. it is a life skill. And I do think coordination wise, it does help them when they're doing other sports as well, because you are using both sides of your body. I just don't think there's a disadvantage to that. It also isn't going to be hard on their body. So I just think there's not any disadvantage at all for them right. to do that and to do and to do both and she is doing awesome though That's so awesome. I can't wait to see I can't wait to see how she does on swim team I know. <laughs> they're gonna let her participate in the meets which will be fun um, I'm super competitive so I'm like oh this could be fun or this could be really nerve-wracking for me but regardless <laughs> it's good um what about is it ever too late to get started and I think you kind of addressed that that question saying that you have older people come and say I want to learn this I've been afraid of the water had a bad experience um or even a parent that may have 
not got their kids involved at a younger age where all the other moms were doing it, you would say it's not too late, right? It's never too late. And yeah. it honestly is never too late. And, you know, my heart goes out to the people that had a bad experience. We had um, one customer in particular that worked, we worked with her for a whole year. She came twice a week. She almost drowned when she was little. Mm-hmm. And her first, her first month or two of classes, she held on to the side because there was so much fear. But by the end of that year, it took her one year coming twice a week and she is swimming freestyle down the lane. She's doing backstroke down the lane. And so she just was determined her kids actually are the ones that pushed her to come and do some lessons. And now she goes and that's part of her um you know, exercise routine is now she goes and she swims laps at another pool. And so I just think it's never too late, even if your kids are, and I think stroke technique too, a lot of the times kids don't have their stroke technique down and they are a little bit older, but I think it's just, we have a lot of kids that go to camps and they have to pass their camp swim test. We're working with a little girl right now who needs to pass her swim test at camp, which she will, she's good now, but that was, you know, but they need to get their technique down so that they don't get tired. Mm-hmm. And we also remind remind them of what to do if they ever are in a situation where they're getting tired because swimming is hard. It's not mm-hmm. easy. And so, you know, we remind them what they need to do if they do ever get tired, if they're swimming in the lake or something. So I think it's never too late and that yeah. everyone should learn. Yeah, for sure. And then is there anything that as moms or parents that we can do at home with our kids to help them be successful with this skill? Um, even like you were saying, you recommend working on some of the skills that they're learning in class at the beach or at the pool, what would some of those look like? So I definitely would. And we, we tell our parents to do this all the time, but when you go to the swimming pool with the kids, I would do the first 20 to 30 minutes when you get to the pool of this is what your swim, this is your swim lesson. And you can make it fun. Absolutely make it fun. Otherwise they're not going to want to do it. (laughs) So we're going to do our, whatever the skill is over here. And so we're going to do this. And so I would do that for a good 15, 20 minutes, make it fun. And then I would, after that, um, let them have their free time, which is kind of how our swim lesson is, is set up anyways. And I just think anything that parents can do with, to help them along with every, like with those skills is going to be helpful. So anything that they can do when they're at the pool to build on what we just did in swim lessons, any repetition is going to help their kids along and to progress more quickly too. They'll progress more quickly. if They practice outside of lessons. And I, I feel like that's such a great idea. Like when you go to the pool, just say, we're going to do 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it is before we go have fun. Cause afterwards it's not going to happen. They're going to be too tired or melting down. But at the beginning, just to say, let's work on that skill and then go have fun. And usually I think you can get your kids to do that. So that was something we really tried to do with Ellie just to practice and put those skills to use outside of the setting that she was learning them in, in a different pool to kind of have them congeal in her brain to make sense and all of that. So that definitely worked for us. We would recommend that to others as well. Well, thank you so much for letting me just ask you some questions. I know there's lots of moms out there that want to get their kids involved in something like this, but don't necessarily know where to start. So I hope this is helpful to them. What is the best way to reach out to you or to get into a class? What would you recommend? People can look us up on the website. It's just BritishSwimSchool.com forward slash Raleigh. Or they can give us a call, 919-258-2066 is our number. Or they can email us at goswimraleigh at britishswimschool.com. And we would love to help them out whenever they're ready to to get going with swim lessons. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amy. I've, I've loved it for my family. I hope others will participate as well with you. And thanks for all that you're doing. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Talk to you soon.